Hello, my name is Bearhead. We're introducing a new cooking program for public television. It's called Cooking with the Colonel, meaning Colonel Doug Allard, who is a gourmet chef unknown to me for quite a few years, but he's quite good at his art, and he will be showing you how to cook deer, elk, commodities, whatever you have. He's uh, quite good at it, and we hope you'll enjoy the program. gentlemen welcome again to another segment of cooking with the colonel and eating with bearhead by the way I think that uh, bearhead didn't give me such high grades last time I'm gonna go to the job service up in Polson and uh, see what they have in the way of food testers he can be replaced whether he believes it or not seriously today we're gonna cook something for you that's pretty simple. wait 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 if I can be replaced, I can go to Job Corps and get a cook, too. I can go to Job Corps and get a cook. And we'll really put on a fancy meal. If you think I'm going to give you 10 every time, I mean, I, that, that wouldn't be fair. Back to the serious stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to make deer hamburger steak with some additions. This hamburger steak is, uh, I've cooked with green chilies a lot. This hamburger steak has minced onions, little garlic, chopped parsley, some chopped green chilies, which by the way, I grew in my garden last summer. My wife, Jara, and I got some seeds from uh, Hatch, New Mexico, which is the heart of the green chili country in the whole world, and uh, planted them, and each year uh, they get hotter and hotter, and I haven't figured that out, figured why, but we still plant the same seeds just each year, and they get hotter and hotter. These aren't too bad. We're going to throw in, I left out the jalapeno peppers, primarily because I forgot to get some. Ooh. We're going to put a little dry red wine in there, and the wine we're using today is Huckleberry wine, my last bottle. And uh, throw a little salt and pepper, and we'll go from there. So here's our hamburger. I, the recipe calls for two or three pounds. Uh, this is two or three pounds, or maybe three and a half pounds. I don't know what it is. When you get your meat back from the uh, butcher, they don't put it in one pound or two pound tins where we get it. They just put it in there. So the first thing we're going to put in there is about three quarters of a cup of minced onion. And that seems like quite a bit. And it is. But that's the way I like it. And I hope Bearhead does. Next, we're going to throw in uh, some garlic. Once again, I could use uh, regular cloves of garlic, but I'm going to just use this packaged or bottled fresh minced garlic. It's pretty good stuff. I like it, and it's a lot easier than, than cracking open the, the uh, garlic cloves each time. Uh, then we'll put some chopped parsley in there. I have to save a little parsley to put on Bearhead's plate because one cooking show he only gave me an eight because he didn't have any parsley on his plate. So we'll chop up the parsley. That's not. Now the frugal gourmet don't make that much noise when he. Notice I saved you a little for the plate, Bearhead. The frugal gourmet I don't make that much noise. Throw that in there. Now, actually, I mix this stuff up rather than throwing it all on the top and mixing it up. I like to mix it up a little bit as you go along. It seems you seem to get a better mix, and things end up a little more even when you do it where you don't do it all at the same time. Just throw it on top and mix it. And after the parsley, we're going to put in some green chilies. 
these green chilies, as I told you, came out of my own garden. We'll chop them up a little more. We froze those. You can keep them for a year or two frozen. We'll distribute those. These are not hot green chilies. These are what they call most places Anaheim chilies. And uh, they're not hot. They just have a flavor of uh, green chili. Uh, kind of gives you a, a southwest taste when you use these. Get those mixed up a little bit. Boy, if I eat that out. Then it Swim calls real for and go fast like the wind. Two thirds of a cup of dry red wine, and this is my last bottle of homemade huckleberry wine. A friend of mine in Ravalli came one day and said, "Hey, if you give me some huckleberries, I'll make you some wine." So he immediately got some huckleberries, and about two months later, I got some wine. Then we're going to put a little salt and pepper in here. I like to put the salt and pepper in a, at a couple of different stages. We'll mix her up a little bit more here. Get it turned over a little bit. <coughs> And we'll do the salt and pepper number one more time. And then we'll mix it up a little more. off a little of our mess here. I'm not the neatest cook in the world. I just believe in getting the cooking done and leaving the mess for later. Now you have to shape this into however size hamburger steaks you want. And I always push the parsley down into there because if you leave it on the outside edge, uh, it tends to burn a little bit. So we'll take one about like that. Shape them into patties. We're going to broil this today, and I'll tell you why we're going to broil it. Bearhead always tells me he doesn't like broiled meat. He says that's cancer causing. So he says, I like my meat fried. So he's getting it broiled. A little grease, never hurt anybody. So, only reason he's getting it broiled. Just kidding. I like, I like to broil things when you possibly can, things that come out good broiled. Some things don't broil too well. Lamb chops, pork chops, steak, can't beat them broiled. Like to cook hamburgers normally on the grill. You notice I don't just make enough for bearhead here. Uh, one of the enjoyments of doing this show is uh, as soon as bearhead has stuffed his mouth full, me and the rest of the TV crew sit down and we do our tasting then. And that's when the real test comes in. Oh, buffalo dust. If we like it, if we like it, it's good. Keep that kind of banner up, Duggan. You're liable to get a pretty poor grade. Yes. Liable to get a pretty poor grade anyway. You know, all this, during all these shows, what I'm really trying to do is upgrade Bearhead's taste a little bit. All his life, he's eaten meat and potatoes and plain old fried stuff and boiled stuff. And I'm trying to put a little sophistication in his eating. And if we can succeed in doing that, we'll have to succeed it. So what we got now here is four... Deerburger steaks, 
Uh, this one here is a little fatter than the other, so, but they don't always come out the same. I've got the broiler preheated, which is a good idea. If you throw stuff in the broiler and then just turn it on, it doesn't cook very good. I have the broiler preheated, so we'll throw that in there. I said 10 minutes at a time, we'll try nine and see how that goes. Well, even eight. We'll check her at eight. After eight, we'll see how that goes and uh, see how we're doing after that. This deer that we're cooking is a small mule deer buck that I shot last fall. I shot it in the head, by the way. <coughs> Pardon me. At about 300 yards. He gut shot it at about 25 yards. I shot it in the head, but it was only about 25 yards. But I didn't gut shoot it. Uh, Bearhead and I were backing up a trail in the woods because we went down the wrong road, looked out to the right, and there he was. Ten minutes later, there he was in the back of our truck. But the mule deer are generally a little stronger in flavor, wild flavor as they call it, than whitetail. So when you get uh, whitetail, you don't have to do as much to camouflage the flavor if you're trying to feed the deer meat to either kids or people who say they don't like deer meat. But uh, a muley, you have to be a little more careful. This was a young buck, so uh, in actual fact, he's just like eating a whitetail buck. He was a, a little four-pointer and uh, very young. He hadn't run. We got him 30 yards from the road, so we were able to clean him open up his cavity, put him in the back, take him to the blocker plant. They hung him up, cooled him, skinned him, butchered him, and everything was done just like it should be. But if you get an old mule deer buck, you will get more wild game flavor. This one should taste very good. And as soon as we uh, pass our time here, we'll turn those over. In the meantime, I'm going to steam bearhead a little uh, asparagus back here. I'm gonna... You can throw it out if you like. Bearhead doesn't like asparagus, I found out today. I'm cooking him a few baked potatoes in the microwave and we'll check that to see how it's coming. Looks good so far. So right about here we can take a little break. If you can cook asparagus so I like it, I'll give you a 20. Well, I'm, all I'm doing is just cooking asparagus because I don't do anything to asparagus except usually I steam it, but my, I can't find the, the bottom of my steamer. You're not on now, are we? Our deer steaks have been in the broiler there now for eight minutes. I'm going to check them. We have a few seconds left on that timing to see how they look. Timer went off. This is what the one side should look like. Uh, it's pretty done. You could actually do it just a little bit more. If you like them real, real well done, you could do it a little bit more. But they should be just so they start turning brown <coughs> so you can see a little bit of, of brownness on the outside edge. So we'll throw those back in there and give them about on that side, we'll try about six minutes and see what happens there. Uh, in the meantime, I'm uh, cooking Bearhead's asparagus here, which he didn't like it, which he doesn't like, but he might eat it if we're lucky. Uh, I didn't have my steamer; I can't find the bottom to it. So, what we're using today is just a frying pan with some water and we're more or less steaming the asparagus. We'll do that for a while. Check our baked potatoes here in the microwave to see how they're doing. They're fine. One of our shows, ladies and gentlemen, this time uh, in this <coughs> series of Wild Game, we're going to actually take you to the slaughterhouse and the butcher shop and show you how the people after we shoot the deer, how they skin it, how they butcher it, uh, show you what they do with it, and show you some of the cuts that come off of a deer. 
One of the reasons we've shown you so far two recipes on hamburger is that probably half or more of the meat that you get from a deer or an elk turns out to be hamburger because they trim all the bones, they trim the ribs. Uh, in a beef where you have more bulk in the ribs, you can eat short ribs, etc. But deer short ribs don't have very much meat on them. Deer ribs I love, but you don't often get them because they're too bulky. The, if you butcher it yourself, you can do that. But the butcher, uh, the wild game cutters, generally just trim them off for hamburger. So your hamburger ratio will be probably over 50% of the meat from a deer or an elk. And uh, in the process of showing you what they do when we get there, we'll show you where the various cuts come from, where the loin is, where the round steaks come from, uh, the parts that you can make roasts from, the parts that don't make good roasts. Uh, and of course, they'll show you all the trimmings that they use for hamburger. We'll take a look and see how we're coming down there now. That side isn't going to take quite so long, so I'm going to get bare heads potato out here for him. Get it ready. We'll slit that a little bit. Give her just a little shot there. I'll get some butter over here off the table. You have to take as good of a care of this bear head as you can because otherwise he's just ornery with you. A lot of butter does. Put a great butter. big old chunk of butter on there. Put a great big old chunk of butter on there. We'll delicately set that on his plate. I will at this time also pour him a little ice water. This is a new touch since he's giving me so much trouble for presentation. Give him a little ice water there. Would you care for some coffee? No, thank you. No coffee for the man. Put the butter back on the table. I'm going to check our. I always take the stuff out of the broiler, take a fork, delve into it a little bit, and see how it's doing as far as done goes. These are pretty good. I just give them another couple minutes and they're done. The one thing you have to be careful of in cooking wild meat, rarely does wild meat, in my opinion, taste good to people when it's rare, and especially hamburger. I think that the hamburger has to be cooked clear through. When you're cooking steaks, you might take a chance on getting them a little bit rare, but of course the wild taste in meat oftentimes comes from the blood. And if you don't cook the meat well done, end up with some blood that hasn't been cooked, you are going to end up in trouble because you'll have still whatever wild flavor was left uh, in the animal. The hamburger, if you're making a hamburger to put on a bun, and you're going to put a lot of onions and ketchup on it, then I will cook rare deer burger uh, because I like it rare. And I don't mind the wild taste, just like Bearhead has often said, he likes the wild taste of, of game. And I do too, as long as it's not too wild. We'll check these and see how they're coming. They're looking pretty good. Now uh, here's what they're looking like on top. I'm going to take the thickest one here and delve down to the inside. Thickest one's not quite done yet, so we'll give them another minute or so. See how that is. Going to find some. tongs here. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, our ham hamburger steaks are just about done. I'm going to fix Bearhead a little asparagus here and uh, see how it suits his palate. Just for him, 
I'm going to cut off the coarse end, and he's just going to get the choice tips. And if he doesn't like that, ladies and gentlemen, he is just not the gourmet eater, which I know he's not anyway. Well, Bearhead, the way you're going to get that is I'm going to have Put a little butter on that. That's, that's about a two for artistic presentation there, butter, buddy. Put, the, put, a, put a little uh, ketchup on that. Okay. Now, this is what our hamburger steaks look like when they're done, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they should be just dark on the outside. We'll throw this on the old boy's plate here see what he has to say about it. Give him a little uh, ketchup if you like. And here's a little uh, tapatio hot sauce if you like that. And we'll see what the old feller has to say. The old feller. Well, I'm going to try it without any condiment. Pretty good, Douglas. Pretty good. I thought it would be rare, but it's not. Now, a lot of people say, why do you put ketchup or steak sauce on, a, on, a, on meat? You just ruin it. Well, why do you put syrup on hotcakes? The way I look at it, I like a certain amount of it, so all right. That's going to be, uh, that, that helped it for me. I'll give you a 10 on that one, Douglas. Hey, look at that. I got a 10. Got a I'm 10. lucky. Now I'm going to try this asparagus. Try the other end. Try the little tender end. Just pick one up with your finger and eat, it, eat the little tender end. For something I don't like, that's not bad. <laughs> Ladies and I gotta gentlemen, I got to give you only a seven, though. We are succeeding. Naturally, to a the potato is good. In Artistic that. presentation, I think one of the things, if you'll notice, is the blue plates and the blue sil uh, silverware, or the blue china and the glasses matches the chairs, the water pitcher. Except he's got a rust colored tablecloth. Now, the important part of food is not only the taste, but the presentation of it. If you, oh, just if a you minute. throw it into a... Just a minute. Just a minute. He's really One time you cut me down to a nine for no parsley on the plate. There. How well, do you I, like I, that? I think, I think, see what he's done now? He's got... And look at these little salt and pepper shakers that don't match. Everything else matches. Perfect, except salt and pepper shakers and the tablecloth. And, and you wouldn't get away with that in a fancy restaurant in New York. Or we ain't in a fancy restaurant in New York. <laughs> Bearhead, we're my well, kitchen I'm here him, on the reservation. I'm going to give him what the main thing that he give. I'm going to give him a 10 for the meat. I'm going to give him a 7 for the asparagus, but that most people like asparagus and I don't. For me, it's edible. I'll eat all of it, which is saying quite a bit. The baked potato, you can't make a mistake on. And so uh, he's got a 10 for the meat. He's got a... Uh, eight for the asparagus, and he's got a... Uh, after I've talked to him about this artistic presentation, I'm only going to give him a seven for making these mistakes. I mean, he, he's, he's got to do better. I got a nine last time without the tablecloth. He didn't even mention the fact that he got a cloth well, napkin this time and doesn't even know how to use it. He left the rest of the... The cloth the napkin, it. there's nothing in the cloth napkin that matches the, 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 uh, the china. There's no blue in there. It's green and red. I mean, it's... Well, we'll try to do better, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have to do better. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I guess for today, that's it. Another segment of uh, cooking with the colonel and, unfortunately, eating with the bear head. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time.